Some Nigerians in the United Kingdom are unhappy that President Mohamed Buhari is pursuing medical attention overseas. And it seems that Vice President Yemi Osibaja's um, Asorok issues will not or will soon expand to other issues as his security aides were seen beating a journalist. <laughs> Wonders they say will never end. This is Plus Politics and I am Mariana Cohn. Some Nigerians in the United Kingdom have voiced their grievances against President Mohamed Buhari seeking medical treatment overseas. Nigerians are under the platform of Global Coalition for Security and Democracy in Nigeria in the United Kingdom protested at the Abuja House in London. The protesters led by Gabriel Aguantain also highlighted the insecurity and lack of basic amenities in Nigeria. And joining me to have this conversation, because I cannot be talking about it on my own, I have Lulu Elegbe and Rachman Adebi, the both political analysts. It's good to have you join us. Gentlemen. Good evening. Interesting. Yeah. I'm going to start with you, Lulu. Um, it seems like the ban on sudden protests has dampened the morale of Nigerians in Nigeria. Mm. So much so that the Nigerians outside have to do it on our behalf. But then it looks like protests don't really do anything to our government. Does this protest have any significance whatsoever? The uh, short answer is no. <laughs> it's, it, I don't think it's going to make any difference. Um, obviously, I understand where they're coming from, because as a candidate in 2015, um, I remember President, well, then candidate Buhari made a promise um, about seeking medical attention abroad. Um, it was part of the whole thing about building up our own infrastructure here. Mm -hmm. But I can't even count the number of times he's visited um, either the UK, Saudi Arabia, wherever. Is he just exaggerating here? Yeah, but see, I don't have, personally, I don't have an issue with anyone going where they feel they can get the best medical treatment. I don't have any issues with that. My problem, though, with what happens with not just with him but with i guess people in a certain poly in the in the political class here mm -hmm. is that they if they can do because because they can do that there's no incentive there's no real incentive for them to build the hospitals and the healthcare system here mm -hmm. back home because at the end of the day the the reality is that the average nigerian cannot travel abroad for medical treatment but then again, the average Nigerian would not need to travel abroad, abroad for medical treatment if the healthcare system in Nigeria was sane, to, to, uh, for want of a better word. Because it's, I mean, I could tell you a whole lot of horror stories I've heard. I think, thank God I haven't been, I haven't oh, had I to experience any of them. I got one yesterday, somebody sent me one on Twitter, mm. uh, a mother who lost Yeah, I think I saw it, a nine-month-old baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I, I read that yesterday and I thought, I've been on this show many times, and one of, the th one of the things I've always said is things happen because of a lack of consequences. That hospital that she described, that doctor she described, that nurse she described, there's no reason those people should still be practicing after, come on, a child died for God's sake. And that's the one that we've heard about. And I, like I said, Has I could tell you so many horror stories about this. People things. being held accountable, because you know, you say, Normally, they should not be still practicing, mm. but we've had so many people die. I tell you what, I have heard of a surgical, some surgical instrument forgotten in somebody's yeah. Yeah, insides I've heard, I've heard because during surgery, they had to use touch lights and, you know. So, but these things happen every day. They're documented. If we go on search, Google search, we would find all kinds of stories. But has there been any precedent as to the hand of the law falling on yeah, those but that's, people? That's, but that's exactly my point. No, I can't, I can't think of any that. If there are, I haven't, I haven't seen it. And that's the problem. Because as long as these things keep happening, rather than, so it's two things. A, build the healthcare system. B, sorry, A, build the healthcare system. And, the, and B, um, the law needs to catch up with these people that are, basically doing whatever they want or doing, I, there's, there's probably an argument to be made that they are doing the best with what they have. There, there's that argument. But sometimes it, it sort of desensitizes them to the seriousness of issues that patients come in with. So you have someone coming into a hospital with an emergency and a nurse or a doctor is just basically lounging and there's no sense of urgency about because 
in those kinds of situations, every single minute counts towards the difference between life and death for that mm -hmm. person. And mm -hmm. when the people that are supposed to be providing that healthcare are not even seen, they're not even, there's no sense of urgency in terms of what they're act, how they're acting and things like that. It's not going to work. It, it, you, can't, you, can't, you can't trust the healthcare system that way. But my issue with, so that's what my issue with the president's um, uh, was frequent trips abroad for medical treatment is. There's no incentive for him or for the government to build our healthcare system. If, if they have, let me put it this way, if they have a personal stake in it, there'll be a lot more urgency to do that. But the reality is they don't. Both the president, the ministers, whoever it is, they, if there's anything wrong with them, they'll fly abroad and deal with the issue. Again, I don't have an issue with that. I think everyone has the right to seek um, the best medical care they can get anywhere in the world if they can afford to. But we have a budget, for God's sake. We're, we're supposed to have a budget for health care, for, for the health ministry and well, all those things. To, what, we what do have a budget for health care. Yes, yeah, so what's happening to it? <laughs> okay, Rachman. What do you think gives these politicians, he's described, the temerity to keep, keep doing what they're doing? And we keep complaining year in, year out. And it's not just about the Buhari <coughs> administration here. Yes, he probably may have overdone it, but what do you think keeps fueling this attitudinal, I mean, the, the lev levity to which they treat us Nigerians and the issues that matter to us. You need, uh, you need to come from the, the thinking, what they're thinking about. What they, the thinking is, what can you do to hold them back? There's no accountability. But there are lots of things we could do, right? There's a lot of things we could do, but the you see when okay, take for example, uh, uh, example the election. You know that somebody is going to go to court, and the person will tell you, "I don't want to go through this process because I know that they have ants everywhere." So, how far I go is how far they will stretch the ant to ensure that you know they don't allow you to get justice. Mm -hmm. So the the judiciary is there to enforce justice. Take for example, the, uh, when you pick up a common petition and say, okay, because the hospital system is not functioning well, you put a petition together and you put it out there, you know, for them to, to be prosecuted. Before you know it, it will be swept under the carpet. Where is sweeping it on, under the carpet? It means that they do not allow Nigerians the freedom of expression to hold, you know, to ask real questions and to hold them accountable. I have so a question for you. Yeah. You say Nigerians, they do not allow Nigerians. I'm wondering, yeah. the guys who work, for example, in the office of the Secretary to the Federation, yeah. where are they from? Nigeria. The guys who work in the judiciary that the hands, <laughs> that long hands get to? Nigerians. Who do not have health care? Nigerians. So, can we really point fingers there at two, these people? Th what are the enablers? Nigerians. There are two Nigerians. The, 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 for, the, for this nomenclature, the ordinary Nigerian and the Nigerians who have privilege. For the ordinary Nigerians... I have met so many people who work in those ministries. They're, they're not privileged. The, the institution that supports them, the people who they report to, are the ones who are meant to be held accountable. But when you do that, take for example this case of this hospital, I remember sometime, some eight years ago, uh, when they wanted to show us that, yes, we can hold us accountable. And somebody reported a case like this. They investigated the case, and then they put punitive measures on those people. But over the time, this, this, uh, the attitude has diminished to a level that people are not even, they don't care anymore. They don't care to a point in which, they, uh, like, even the bosses up there don't care. So why should I care? So it starts from the top. And why there is so much questioning of start, starting from the top is the fact that you can come and promise that I'm going to fix why. And you are seeing, you are the same person, seeing violating that why. You have said to Nigerians, I'm, I, I'm not going to allow, I'm not going to seek medical treatment abroad. And I'm not going to allow all people who work in my cabinet or you know, under my regime to seek, seek medical treatment abroad. But in less than six months or, or day about, you are the first person who is, you know, who is going against what you told Nigerians. So how, how, so how do you measure up that? And Nigerians have been crying in Nigeria. There's been protest. There's been protest in the in in the Abuja House in London. So what's the outcome of everything? It means that some some people feel that anything you say, yeah, doesn't hold us back.
What does that say about us as a country where those who <coughs> govern us, no matter what we do, even if it's the only tool that we have to get some form of accountability, uh, that's protesting, is gains no attention. What do we do? Where does this leave us? Because it sounds like um, it looks more like pouring water on the back of a chicken. I think the problem is that we, we when I say we, I mean with the non political class, we don't, I think we don't understand the power that we have. Um, because if we did, there are lots of things that wouldn't happen in this country. Um, I can't remember what year it was when we had this Occupy Nigeria thing, um, when um, we woke up one morning and Phil had gone from, I can't remember how much it was. And the government had to retract that because protests and strikes and everything basically shut down the country. Now, we did that, well, I wasn't here, but like we, we as a country did that successfully at the time. But who were the, the people time. who fronted? That yeah, was 2012. 2012. Yes, who were the people so, who fronted these, I mean? Of course, the, yeah. the, 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 it, because he had the hands of the political class in it. Exactly. The, and, and, and this is it was, it's, it, it was so can we not as nigerians <laughs> protest for a good cost without having political undertones that, or that, being that is the, by that is the problem because if you if you look at if you look at um if you look at most protests in nigeria many of them are not spontaneous protests many of them are organized protests that's the reality and that's where the problem is because when you have something that is that organized it means there is an agenda driving it if the so you can't you can't really the the credibility of that protest goes into question straight away because there's an there's that agenda behind it but if the if a protest look at the protests going on in hong kong for example it's been going on for a long time mm -hmm. and um, chile exactly and chile um there was the one in ukraine a few years ago that led to their president resigning mm -hmm. so I don't think, so when I say we don't understand the power that we have, this is a democracy, or it's supposed to be a democracy. We as the people, if we're not happy with something, we can come out and say, no, we don't want this. I'm not saying disrupt the country or anything like that, but where it's clear that the government is not just doing the right thing, but almost like they are rubbing the wrong thing in our faces, then we should be able to say, well, no, you guys actually work for us. It's not the other way around. But we don't seem to get that. We don't, we don't seem to understand that. Like I said, with President Buhari, I mean, he's the president. Even if he wasn't, he's a Nigerian citizen. So he has the right to go abroad for a medical, for whether it's medical, private visit, whatever it is, he has the right to do that. But the when problem it's done is, by taxpayers or on taxpayers' money, and it's it, done a bit more frequently than usual, there yeah, there's that. And then there's the fact that the, his doing that means... Um, the health system in the country. I, as I've said this before. I just don't think as long as you can, as long as you have um, an out, for want of a better word, if you have a medical emergency or a medical issue, where's the incentive for you to do something about the other hundred and something million people who don't have what you have? Because if I, can, if I know that I can get away with doing this or I know that, oh, I can afford to do this, there are, a million, there are over 100 million people who cannot afford that. But that's, the, thinking, the thinking almost doesn't register because it's, you, you don't have that personal stake in it. And that's where my issue is. You took the words right out of my mouth because, you know, half the time Nigerians don't complain about stuff. They'd rather just sit and watch until mm. it hits close to home. Absolutely. Uh, a former governor of Akwai Bom State, now senator, <laughs> or now minister, um, said he built a state-of-the-art or world-class hospital, you know, hospital. In the and then he took ill. Please, where did he go? <laughs> he, he went abroad. There you go. He, he didn't there even take ill. It was some minor incident of uh, an accident. Of course, he had a small scratch. And the, the next <laughs> thing he had scratch. was he, he had to travel abroad. The question is this. We have to put it right. We, as the people who have opportunity to speak on behalf of Nigerians, we need to tell the government that the life of every Nigerian matter. When are we going to tell the government? How are we going now, to tell the they're government? They're listening to us now, and what they build today is, it is, they're not building it just for themselves, they're building it for their own heritage. Because I keep telling everybody, anything you do to Nigerians today, it has a way of coming back. Karma 
is a law that is being, it, it's a law of nature. Mm -hmm. Anything you do, it will come back and on to you. So why don't you endeavor to do the right thing? Because the question is, we keep going around in virtual circles of failures. We've been complaining about the X sector. Why don't you pick one sector and make it functional from beginning to the end? I wish we had pictures of health centers in this country. Um, last year, a friend, my friend's dad, was he had a stroke and we had to rush him to the hospital. It's a very big university teaching hospital, not in Lagos, by the way. But you know how big those hospitals are. Mm -hmm. The bathrooms were, they were ridiculously terrible. I'm looking for tougher yeah. words to use. And the mosquitoes in these hospitals are from hell. <laughs> and these are places that people go to seek help. You, this, this two months ago, my mom had to go to the hospital. She, had, she bought everything, including a scissors for the hospital, including gloves. So you have bad health service, and you still have to pay and buy everything you need in the hospital. So I, I, I'm wondering, how long can we see, go thinking, on like this? There's a thinking problem in Nigeria. The thinking problem is, are we thinking to solve problems of humanity as a people in Nigeria? So, so I think the question I should be asking is, what are polit when politicians run for office or when they make promises do we really believe them it's that see it's a it goes back to lack of consequences if your if your election if your election or your re-election is not directly tied to merit then it, you can say whatever you want because you know you're going to... merit can be interpreted in different ways. No, merit we in this... roll out the drums in this country when somebody tires our, our street. No, no, but that, merit in this context the, is what you say... promised. You've said, you, okay, see a president that says, I'm not going to go abroad for medical treatment. And then within your first time, you go, God knows, there was a period you were out for almost six months. But then I build months. you a road, and I give you a little community water, and, well, and add it, that to my... At that point, it depends on what, how important any of them is to... Any, to I, uh, it depends on how important any of those things then becomes to someone. That, that, then, this, that then determines, okay, he didn't do X, but he did Y. How important is Y to me? But people, the, I, I think he, me, he mentioned a thinking problem. People don't think that deep. A governor, I, I won't say which state... <laughs> He put up um, street lights, and it was a whole carnival because he put up street lights for crying out loud. And I'm thinking, for God's sake, it's street That's lights. My point. And to them, he's uh, performing what what they was that silly <laughs> phrase they use, uncommon <laughs> transformation and all that rubbish. I thought, for God's sake, he put up street lights. I mean, if that guy does not do anything yeah. else in his first term, he will win it, win a second term. Because he put up the street lights. The corruption and this in is Nigeria the problem. is killing everybody. <laughs> we need to deal with it. Take, for a, take the case of the NDC. NDDC. 300 contracts awarded, 120, 120 paid for, and no single project being ex executed. Who are you going to hold accountable? As we speak now, nobody is holding anybody accountable. It's just been, we're going to probe, we're going to, we're, we're going to probe. So it means that the Niger Delta people, the masses, the poor of the poor that are suffering because they are politicians that they, that they elected to go represent them is coming back to steal their commonwealth. So the accountability and the people now are the ones still defending the personality or the set of people who have stolen This is the, the problem. I, I keep saying, because, you know, every time we point fingers at the government, and I'm not in any way trying to say that the government is the best government in the world. No, the politicians have their own share of blame, but we, the people, seem to be aiding and abating these the kind of attitudes. people always aid and abate because we, they have been impoverished in all ramifications. Is it a poverty no issue? Roads? I mean, it's, I'm sorry it's, if I am... It's, it's, it's if I, I'm sorry, if I were to be poor, mm. and I know that my situation is bad, wouldn't I want to get out of it? Why would I want to keep being poor? Yeah, but it's a combination of factors. There's a poverty issue. So if a, a, maybe a but minister But I know why I'm being guy. poor, because somebody's not doing his job. Yeah, but the, the problem, what poverty has done to Nigeria is that it's made people become very selfish. So if someone comes and starts to distribute 10,000 naira to a village or a town of, um, say, 1,000 people, for example, he doesn't need to do much to win the election. Never mind that he's stolen millions or billions, but 
all they can see in that moment is that 10,000 Naira. And you, in a way, I can't really blame them that much because these are people that maybe the highest amount they've seen in the last two, three years is 1,000 Naira. And then they see 10,000 Naira. Nobody's going to be thinking of this man stole money, this man did the X, Y, Z, let's no, kick no, him out of there. No, 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 that's, no. Sorry, sorry. That, that's, that's one part of the problem. The other part of the problem is you have someone who is obviously stealing government money, but then the tribal and religious nonsense that we do here comes in. So if he's being criticized and he's being called out for what he's doing, someone from his village will say, no, it's because he's from this tribe or it's because he's from this religion. That's why you're saying X, Y, Z about him. All of a sudden, it devolves into a political, sorry, into a religious and ethnic issue, which it never was to begin with and which it really isn't. But they're okay to fan those flames because it distracts everybody else from what the real issues are. Those, those are where I, that's where I think the problem is. And as long as we have this silly religious ethnic mindset that we have in Nigeria, not, well, in Africa, but in Nigeria, in Nigeria. we're going to continue. We're going to continue along this line. I think they, we're, we're taking too much uh, for the average Nigerian. Every Nigerian must think we must begin to change our mindset. Mm. The thinking we're talking about is you know the difference between your right and wrong. And when do you we? see one evil, do we? Up, yes, we do know. Because when we I think in this case say, you need to speak for yourself because a lot of people don't know right from wrong. Oh, okay. Do no, I disagree with that. They know. They know. They just don't. They, or they just pay a blind eye. Exactly. That, yeah. That's what it is. They do know. They Everybody knows. They just rather face the other eye. direction. When somebody is stealing you dry, the contract that you know has been awarded to better your community and so one person now corner the whole contract and put it in his pocket why don't you take your family because you can because that contract has denied you your employment why don't you take your family and go sit in the guy's house or office to say get this contract done so that it could benefit the larger community or the larger society at large nigerians need i've said it time and over nigeria need to be told or explained to the approach of how to get our leaders to be accountable. I've said it, one, you don't, need, you don't need anybody's approval to file yourself in one line, put a placard, and go every day consistently. Do shift every morning. Let some sort of people be there with the different placards. In the afternoon, let some people be there with placard. By the time you do it consistently over a period of time, I'm telling you, Nigerian politicians don't have that lever to stomach things for a long time, especially when press and social media are still What about right. us? We also, do we have the staying power? It is because the staying power see? that we need to develop. Yeah, but we need to develop this methodology of, when? you know? When? We, that's why we're saying it. That's why we're saying that if all of us begin to take things, because in Nigeria, there are a lot of levels, the local government level, the state level, the federal government level, the, even the agency level is there in different structure as it relates to you in your community. Take for instance, government awards directly to 77 local government X amount of money. This money is meant to do X and Y. Have you gone to your local government chairman to say, oh, we hear the money is now flowing to you directly now. So far so good, in the last six months, what have you been able to do with our money? Are you just paying salaries? Do you get, show us the project you're doing. And if you show us the project you're doing and we, you tell us the the FOI is there to ask questions, how much does, does this project cost? If it does not accumulate back to the total money you've gotten from government, where is the rest money? Why are you not show? See, the, one of the critical challenges that we have is we, the government do not even have the F1 tree to even show Nigerians this is how much budget are spent. We all, everything we hear is budget, but the accountability of the budget, which is the reporting, is not in the, in the people's uh, field, except for, for some limited space in the federal government. Local government is where development should start. Nigerians are not holding there, and they, and they are the closest to everybody, because you don't need to travel far to go to your local government councils and everything. But Nigerians do neglect all that and go high up there. Yes, high up there is going to trickle down, but notwithstanding, your local government is what you should focus on. Take, for example, now, um, the governor of Lagos has signed that, okay, each local government produce three streets to be reconstructed. And uh, the community leaders asking those questions, oh, my councillor in my local government, this project that this governor has assigned to us, how are we going to ensure that we 
look at the best the project that is in their need in our in our community and let's use this money to fix it you know stakeholder meeting at that level is not going round it's been segmented to some selected political leaders that will weigh in and look at how they're going to take a, a chunk out of the money so we need to begin to ask those questions leaders down there from the cda chairman to every other community stakeholder they need to ask real questions from our leaders and make them accountable because when too many people when everybody gets on the table and ask questions it will be difficult for the guy to steal your money dry especially when you know the budget in question okay finally Lulu, uh, how many because everything is you guys are saying it boils down to awareness education how many people are even interested because the average nigerian when you're talking to them they have this um, more like they resign to fate like I beg, it's not my business. I mean, I could not be bothered. I just want to eat my gari and go to bed. And that, that's why I asked that question. How long are we going to keep paying a blind eye until, should we wait until it, it yeah, gets I mean, worse? Yes, I, I see what, I, I get what you're saying. And I think it's two things. So one of them goes back to um, a point that, that he mentioned earlier about, or well, you both mentioned about staying power and all that. But... It's, so when I say it's two things, there's a resignation to fate because you don't think anything is going to change, anything is going to be any different. So the mentality is, you know what, let me just do my own thing, mind my own business and do what I can do. Then there's the, the second issue, again, is the issue of poverty. A hungry person cannot think properly. That's the reality. We, that's something we can't run away from. Someone, a friend of mine used a very amusing analogy once. He's, I think it was, uh, was it Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein that did the gravity, the law of gravity, mm -hmm. when he was sitting under a tree and an apple fell and he started, started coming up with the law of gravity and all that. And my friend said, if he, Albert Einstein was hungry that day, when that apple fell, he would have just picked it up and eaten it. <laughs> Gravity is not what he would have been thinking about. And that's the, it's funny, but it's, it's so profound because if you're hungry, you can't, you can't think properly. If someone doesn't know where his next meal is coming from, he's not going to be carrying placards to go to anybody's office to protest. I would. Really, you don't know where your next meal is coming from. You don't know where your next, when I say next meal, well, I mean I between morning and... I know where my problem is. Yes, but you have, you have a husband, you have three kids at home who you don't know where they're, where they're, you don't, you don't know where they're going to eat. I, I'm sorry, I, can, I, can, I don't see it. Not because I don't want to, not because I don't want to hold the man accountable, because, but because my, my priorities are, my priority is to feed my family. And feeding my family does not, unfortunately, does not include carrying a placard to someone as much as that is what is needed. But that's the, by the time you multiply that by the millions of people that are living in poverty in this country, you can understand why a lot of these politicians get away with the kinds of things that they do. And even when they see those people with placards, I mean, if someone, if someone is in a state of poverty and someone offers them 10,000 naira, 20,000 naira, they will take it. Not because they are bad people, but because they are hungry. Because they don't know when, when next they are going to see anything like that. And because none of these things will change overnight, they don't believe that it's the staying power thing. They don't believe that anything they keep doing over the next one year is going to change anything. So the, 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 the thinking is, you know what, let me just take it eat today and I can worry about but tomorrow another time. But where does that leave us? Because, you know, at the end of the day, we keep going around in circles. And yeah. then another election year is at hand, and uh, we will keep hearing the same stories. And uh, I don't know. Really, where do we go from here? Well, I, I, we'll take a short break. They're not going anywhere. When we come back, people apparently uh, trapped in Boko Haram territories. Um, we hear that a lot of them, they run into millions. What is our government doing to rescue these people? And this is one of the things that people were protesting in the UK about, not just the president's medical trip, but of course, insecurity in Nigeria. We'll be right back after the break. <laughs> 